We are back for the final day of the Blue Marlin. This is Hawaii 3. We are on to the island of Kauai, starting in Port Allen. We have visited a couple other islands. Kauai is uh, a smaller island on the Hawaiian chain, uh, and it's known in touristy circles as the more wild, uh, outdoorsy kind of island to visit, where you do zip lining and volcano hikes. Not that you don't do those things on Maui and Oahu and the other islands, but it's a little bit more outdoorsy adventures than the uh, resorty adventures, especially those on Oahu. As with the last few games in the Blue Marlin, the trolling sequences have been sped up to four times speed. The fish fighting sequences are played at regular speed, and all game sound is added in post. This cuts out the sound effect track, which causes a lot of problems and is quite annoying, especially while fighting fish. The clinking of the reel gets quite annoying, and it cuts out an audio track of the game's fantastic music. And, of course, the sped up trolling sequences would warp the music to being disgusting. And the boat motor sound effect also really hurts the quality of the music. So the music that you hear is just a mix of Blue Marlin tracks. This video is a little bit different in that when we get to the ending fanfare, when we finish the game, spoilers, I do beat the game in this video, I know it's quite long still, um, the, that audio will be left intact, but my commentary track will have the the uh, added music. Anyway, here's our first billfish. A 600-pound sailfish will not quite be enough to beat the last day of the game. The way this game works is the uh, biggest billfish caught by any fisher person on any given tournament day wins that tournament day. Billfish in this game are blue marlin, black marlin, striped marlin, swordfish, and sailfish. These billfish will not appear in those schools of fish that you see. They will come up behind those schools of fish. That was a barracuda. Not worth any points in the tournament. I accidentally hooked it when the fish were turning that corner there. This particular fish fight, I did speed up to double speed because it took me about 11 minutes of real-time fighting. It ends up being more than an hour of game time, as you can see the time ticking down there from it's a little after 7 now, and the fight you'll see keeps ticking up. I got this fish close to the boat, but even with my maxed out physical stats as they are, my character didn't have the, the strength to keep up with the fish, and I didn't have the skill to bring the fish all the way in. But I did do my darndest, because this may have been the biggest billfish I have ever hooked in this game. And I've caught some 12 and 1300 pound billfish in my history with this game. So I'm not sure what the size of this one was or if I just got bad luck. I even had some decision decisions to make, as in the real smoking look, did you see him jump, look, did you see him tail walk, and I made several good decisions, several correct decisions, but I was never actually able to get the benefits from that. The fish never really got tired, didn't get the sweat mark on the, on the fish logo down there. So I'll describe the fish fighting screen. Down in the bottom right, you see the fish with the line in its mouth. When that line is moving a little bit, that means that the fish is, the, the hook is getting close to coming out. When that line moves quickly, very quickly, that means that the hook is very close to coming out, and you have to be really careful with how much you pull back on the, on the rod. Uh, the vitality in green, that's the fisher person's vitality. I assume it's a man, the fisherman's vitality. Um, and the fish, when it gets tired, you'll see little sweat marks appear above the fish, the blue, blue fish logo in the bottom of the screen. Of course, the line length is how far away the fish is from the boat. I have the line length set at 100 feet when I'm trolling, so that's the length that it starts whenever I hook a fish. Uh, the max you have is 512. If the fish gets to 512, then you run out of line and the fish gets away. Uh, you're not hearing this because I've taken out the sound effects, but when your line starts to, be, to, starts to come under strain, you'll hear a clinking sound that goes at one speed when it's at like level one risk, and then a double speed from that when it's at level two risk, and that's for the line actually snapping. So you can lose the fish by the hook coming out of their mouth, you can lose fish by line snapping, 
you can lose fish by having them pull your line too far out. You can also very randomly and, and pretty rarely, thankfully, lose fish by sharks eating them and a couple of other random events that happen in the game. The boat reversing that you see happening really quickly there helps you reel, but it doesn't tire the fish out as much. If you reverse the boat, it means you start driving the boat towards the fish. And it lets you reel a little bit easier, but the, the trade-off is the fish doesn't tire out as quickly. So here we're back to normal speed on that uh, after that unsuccessful sad fight, but it took, as you can see, a couple hours of game time to bring that fish to... to lose the fish, should say. So I wish I could have caught that one just to see how big it was, but no bother. So there's a black marlin that weighs approximately 400. The way the weighing in works is when you think you have a fish that's big enough to win the tournament day, you go back to port, you get an official weight. Your little assistant guy there, the one who tells you, I think you have a bite on your rod, which is endlessly funny, and tells you other warnings and other info. There's the guy with the sunglasses. He also estimates, oh, it looks like it's about 400 pounds, which means it's between 351 and 449, I think. And, you know, just within 100 pounds of that 400. So on these days, if you can get an about 800-pound fish on this last day, that will usually be a winner. About a 700-pound fish the day before. 600 pound the day before and 500 pound on the first day generally will be your winners, but I believe it's random. I don't know. It doesn't tell you the results of the other fishermen in this game, which is kind of frustrating. It only tells you who got the biggest fish, and if that's you, then it shows you at the end. So you can't actually see when you win what the winning weight was or what the second place weight was. If you lose, then you can see what the winning weight is. So we could gather information maybe by losing this tournament a few times and seeing what the winning weights are so we can aim to beat that. But I wasn't going for speed on this last day of the Blue Marlin. I wanted to see the size of fish that I could catch. I'm going to switch locations here. We're going from Port Allen to Nihau. Nihau. In the manual, it talks about a famous volcano there in Nihau, and I think that's what was on the uh, the cover card there of Nihau. So you can pull up billfish behind schools of fish or behind those seagulls. There, I pulled one up, and now I just have to go back and get them to bite. You can also pull them up behind a whale, which will occasionally pop up in the level. What makes this Hawaii level kind of tricky, this very last Hawaii level, is not that all the fish are too big or very large and difficult to pull in, but that there's lots of smaller fish. See, this is a 200-pound sailfish. There are the biggest fish in the game in this level, but there are also a lot of very small fish. So it takes you a long time to hook those big ones, and then you have the tough fight to bring in the big ones. Earlier in this in this playthrough, it was in an earlier video, I caught a thousand... A, Approximately 1,000 pound marlin, I think that ended up being 980 something was the, the official weight. See, this one was under 200 pounds, so it's still too young. Back to the sea it goes. Oh, back to the ocean it goes. But I caught it on a lucky break, one of those go for it, the fish is very exhausted random events that I believe, and these are all just anecdotal from my own experience. I believe those happen more in the early levels. You're more likely to get a fish that's bigger than your size class, bigger than you're ready for, you'll get that bonus, go for it, suddenly the fish is just exhausted. You don't really get that in these later levels. You have to catch these bigger ones the old-fashioned way. But I did get that 1,000-pounder earlier. Now, that would have been the winner this day. If I can get a 1,000-pounder today, I can head back to port right away and just finish up. Now, sometimes you get the, the tuna, as you saw, instead of a billfish behind the school. That's a little wrinkle the game throws into you, and you don't know you have a tuna. There's a Dorado on one of the other fish you can catch. Commonly called, uh, people call them dolphin fish also. Um, and then when their meat is served, they're often called mahi-mahi. So those are all the same fish. Dorado, dolphin or dolphin fish, and the fish that makes the meat mahi-mahi. And then, of course, you saw the barracuda before, the tuna, and you can also hook uh, sharks in this one. They're called white sharks in this game. 
You can hook them. They have really great music, but they aren't worth anything for the tournament, and I believe you don't even get experience from them, from the uh, the body category experience or the decision-making experience from catching one of those sharks. So like this one, I'm reversing the boat to help me reel a little bit easier so I can pull the fish in. You see the marlin, sometimes they will just jump like that randomly and pull out a length of line, and they seem to do it on a timer. They will, after so long of having them on, they will make a jump, and sometimes you'll get these random events where it'll say, wow, did you see a jump? Why did you see a tail walk? And you can make the choice of winding the reel, pull up the rod, doing nothing. There's a few other times where you can make choices. And you have a level of decision-making, basically. Um, it's called your skill level. So you would think that those events were random, a 50-50 shot. But they are not. They're not random. Here we got to go for it. The fish is very exhausted. You'd think it would be a random coin flip, but it seems that the better you are at that skill, the more likely you are to get those decisions correct. So there must be some internal metric where sometimes neither choice is right just because you're not skilled in that. And you only get skill points. There's a 900-pound blue marlin. That could be our day winner, but we're going to finish out the day to see how big a fish we can catch. So that's a really tough area to gain levels in because you have to make correct choices to gain points in that area. But it's tough to make those correct choices when you're not skilled in it. Here's a go for it. The fish is exhausted too. So that's that's one stat that I do not max out in this game in this particular playthrough because it just takes too long. I've got my body strength and muscle power. Both of them have to do with your physical ability to actually hoist fish in and to keep your endurance up. And you gain points in that based on the number of fish you catch and the size of fish you catch. So there's a billfish behind a school. Sometimes they will just randomly pop up like that, but generally you have to get your lure behind a school. In the manual, and this was endlessly frustrating when I was a kid, it didn't explain that you have to put your lure behind a school to pull them up. It says, watch for marlin behind schools of fish, and I believe that was because of a poor translation in the manual. They didn't quite get that instruction correct. I don't think they meant to hide that from players. I just think that whoever was translating it from Japanese to English didn't quite get that translated correctly. Here we're going to go from Nihao over to Nawili Wili. I'm not sure I got that right. Actually, I'm fairly certain I got that wrong. These Hawaiian names are not very good for me. And this is a really tricky level layout, as you can see. Part of what makes these last levels more challenging is not the, the more small fish and larger size fish. It's the level layouts. There's more obstacles, there's less open water to just drive around in, and very sillily, I just kind of drive around this level for the rest of the time. When I should, just head back to another level. But I did want to explore all of these. But I drive around this now wheelie wheelie with the bridges and the islands and all the other obstacles that are in there. Thankfully, there's a, a nice blue marlin. Thankfully, with the trolling speed set to four times, you don't have to watch me slowly tool around this level. Because not only does your boat move slowly, um, the levels are also quite laggy when you're on busy levels like this. The game has a hard time rendering the ocean waves moving and the people doing stuff on the shore. There's cars. Some of them have airports with airplanes. See, I'm catching a lot of these small fish, too, and it's not taking long to find them or hook them. It's just that many of them are too small to be anything close to tournament winners. So... The boat section, sometimes the music bogs down and your boat sound covers up the music tracks. Anyway, the bass line of the music tracks, and it just gets it's super laggy. So speeding that up, I think, will make these much more watchable. And it turns uh, an hour-long video into a 20-minute video, so that helped me also. As I'm recording this, there's a pigeon in the chimney of our place here, so if you hear a 
That's because the pigeon is up in the top of the chimney, and it kind of echoes down into the fireplace and through the room. So, sorry if I sound a little, a little loony. So the game time on this one, you can see it's 1330s now. And when I was a kid, I did not understand the 24-hour clock because, again, the manual left a lot to be desired in terms of translation because the manual said the tournament goes until 4 p.m. But it didn't explain that the game uses a 24-hour clock. I think the Japanese people understand 24-hour clocks because a lot of places not in America they do use a 24-hour clock, but his tournament goes till 4 p.m., and I was looking at time 13-something. What does that mean? So, yes, it's 1.45 now in game time, and I have until 4 p.m., and I, I do use all of the time trying to get that 1,000-pounder. I've got the approximately 900-pounder. Let's see if I can get one behind the seagulls. I did a lot of experimenting in my, my later years with changing lures and changing depth because the manual indicates that you should be doing all those things. All that variety makes a difference according to the manual. But I haven't noticed as much difference as there probably should be in the game. You're able to pretty much, if you want to, go for the default lure, which I think is uh, the feather, I think is what it's on default and the depth set to float. I, if you want to, I think you can play through the whole game just with that lure and that depth all the time. But it does give you choices for different baits and different depths. Especially the depths. I have never really noticed changing depth having much difference at all in the size or quality or number of fish that I, that I see. So that's something that the programs could have worked in more, I suppose, to give the game more complexity. Although, if it had been any more complex, I don't know if as a kid I would have been able to stomach it. As it was, I rented this game a lot as a kid. Here's another tuna. But we'll bring it in just for fun. I played this game a lot. I never bought it, because I don't think I ever saw it new at the store, because there was days in the NES time when different stores had different games, and if a game was not out right at the time that you were playing it, wasn't new, sometimes you couldn't find them, and it became it was very difficult. So you would see it at the rental store, and wow, I missed that one when it was in the shops. I later on got a copy of the Black Bass, but I still don't have a hard copy of this one. I think when I go back to the States, I'm going to try to seek out a hard copy of this one. So we're going to finish out our day here pretty soon. We go till 4 p.m., which is, for you non-24-hour clock users, 1,600. Here in Europe, they use it on a lot of written materials, so stores will often have their open hours written in 24-hour clocks. But we've, we've yet to hear anybody ever say, yeah, we, we close at 17.30. It's always we close at 5.30, verbally. So it's just kind of, it's a little strange. Here's another, I accidentally hooked a fish from that school. They also will interchange using a colon with two dots for time and using a decimal point with one dot for time between the hours and minutes. And I think that's confusing. When we, when we were in math class, I remember learning or being specified to that using a decimal point means just that, that the number is a decimal meaning a, a, a percent that it's going to be out of a hundred, or a, it's a tens. So using that for minutes, which is out of 60, is, I think, misleading. So when it says, like, 5.30, you're thinking that it's 5 and 30 out of a hundred, not 5 and 30 minutes out of 60. So I think that's a flaw that they use. But it's strange that they just use things interchangeably here. And also decimal points are sometimes commas here. Here's a black marlin, about 800 pounds. That's not a bad size. I already have that bigger one in the blue marlin I have, but that may have been a tournament size winner. Again, we don't know what the full results are, which I think is another flaw in the game, is that uh, when you win a tournament day, you can't get the full results of the day. So it's 15, 20s now. I'm gonna tool around the dock here to see if I can catch a couple more. 
I think at this point, even if I hook that thousand pounder, I probably won't be able to bring it in in time. If you, even if you're fighting fish, there's a whale. There's a whale. We get a nice look at a whale for the end of the game. We'll try to raise one here behind the whale. There we go. And it's a tuna. Imagine that. Oh well. We get the exhausted bonus. This was uh, a real fishing tournament. Catching these... I caught a 700 pound tuna before. That one's 300 pounds. That meat uh, would just about pay for gas and travel getting all around the trip. A big tuna like that sells for a pretty premium price. So we're getting about five minutes till the end of the tournament here. In game time, not in real time. And the last fish I'll catch is going to be this Dorado. Isn't that nice? And I get to see another whale, but I drive him into the waves, banging on the wall. Here we go. We're going to weigh in, and we're going to see our ending music. As we're finishing weighing in, looking forward to doing some more games next week. And uh, I'd like to do more with this game someday, but I'm going to take a little break from the Blue Marlin after grinding it for so long. Did have a good time with this one. Uh, I would recommend it to someone, especially if you're just clicking through your R-O-M-S, which I, 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 we know is a bad word, but my only choice to play games out here. Uh, it's a good one to look into, to explore, especially if you have some patience. It has some things that are very much like real-life fishing sims. So as we go to our final fanfare, I will leave you to watch my victory weight and the ending cutscene. We will see you next week with another video.